Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon or good evening, good morning, wherever you are, depending on what time you're watching. I hope your week is getting off to a great start. I hope your day is getting off to a great start. And I hope you're taking care of you. Welcome to TK's Two Cents. Today, I'm going to be talking with you about overcoming jealousy and imposter syndrome, two forces that hold so many people back from living their best lives, from developing their potential. So I want to give you my two cents on how to deal with these things. Let's start with the first tweet, overcoming jealousy. So here's what I wrote the other day. Curiosity is my favorite antidote for jealousy. If I'm tempted, I should have wrote when I'm tempted, because yes, this is a temptation for me too. I'm no different from anyone else out there. If I'm tempted to have some, have someone, if I'm, if I'm tempted to hate someone because they have better results than me, I make myself a student of their success. Within a week, my jealousy is transformed into gratitude for how much smarter they've helped me become. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is give a shout out to uh, people who comment or reply because whether you agree or disagree, whether you add something or challenge me, it always provides another vantage point that can be helpful for me and my viewers. So the first comment I want to shout out on this jealousy one is from my man, Adam. Um, Adam, what's going on, brother? I always appreciate your dialogue. Uh, I actually did a podcast interview on Adam Crowell's uh, podcast. You should check out the episode. Uh, it was a real good conversation. But here's what he has to say about this. Humility versus hubris. Humility says there might be something for me to learn here. Hubris says there isn't anything for me to learn here. That's right on the money. And that's exactly what I want to talk about. So I'm going to riff on this for a moment. And then I'm going to address an objection slash concern that I received that I think is, is worth giving some attention to. So the more you can be challenged by other people's success, the easier it becomes to celebrate their success. Now, why is this important? I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say things like, when other people have good things that happen to them, you should be happy for them. And, and it becomes this moral imperative that we feel like we need to pressure ourselves to look up to. But sometimes we see other people succeed especially when it's in an area of our lives where we've been struggling for a while and we feel jealous. And I think it's okay to be able to admit that to yourself. I think it's okay to be honest with yourself because anytime you try to suppress a feeling or pretend like, oh, I'm above that, I never feel that, well, you can't really deal with it. You know, one of the things I like to say is that when you, when you deny the problem, you diminish the beauty of the solution. And there is nothing more beautiful in life than being able to achieve a higher perspective that allows you to be unintimidated and non-defensive about the challenges you face in life. But you can't acquire those higher perspectives if you are living in denial, if you are pretending like, oh, nothing ever tempts me, nothing ever challenges me. And so it's okay to be honest about the fact that sometimes you see people succeed, you might know based on something you read in a self-help book or some sermon you heard that you should be happy for them, but you just don't feel happy for them. While it's okay to be honest about that, it's important to look at things a little bit deeper because there's a direct link between appreciation and education. If you can't appreciate something, you can't learn from it. If you can't celebrate something, you can't learn from it. And this is why I challenge people, including myself, to be careful about dismissing other people's success as being entirety, entirely a matter of luck. Luck definitely plays a role. And sometimes we can look at people achieving great results and we can say, yeah, but that's not entirely because they're brilliant. Some of that is because of the right time, right place, so forth. But if it's luck, you can't learn from that. But you wanna try to find the one to two things in everybody's situation that you can learn from. So even if I look at someone, maybe I look at a Kardashian or something, right? Cause that's who everybody likes to pick on. And I don't know how much of it is luck and how much of it is skill. And maybe what I want to say is something like, oh, but that's 99% luck. All right, fine. I can't learn anything from the 99% luck. So let's put that on the shelf as being irrelevant to me. Cause I'm not here to look cute. I'm here to learn, I'm here to grow. What's the 1% that I can learn from? What's one thing they do well, which if I emulate and then customize and find my own approach, 
makes me smarter, makes me stronger, makes me more successful. The moment I can start to look at other people's progress in that way, my jealousy transforms into gratitude. Why? Because by making myself a student of your success, I begin to look forward to more moments like this because all of those moments are something that benefits me. And that's really what it comes down to. Are other people's examples of success a threat to you or are they a tool for you? If you're not learning from it, it's gonna be a threat to you. It's just gonna make you feel bad about yourself. But if you make yourself a student of it, it becomes a tool for you. So the next time you feel jealous, step back and say, all right, this person has got something that I want. That's what's bothering me. But what's one thing they're doing right? And how can I implement that or integrate that with my life so that I can improve my own performance and raise the probabilities that I'll be able to achieve a similar result in my own life. That's my point, but I did get a challenge and I think this challenge is worth addressing because it brings out an important aspect of how we want to deal with the so-called negative emotions. So this challenge is from Corey and this was on Twitch. Twitch is a blockchain based social media site. It's got a similar user interface to Twitter. Um, but it, it combines the BS, the, the Bitcoin SV blockchain with micro payments uh, to be able to allow you to control your own data on social media. So I like to put things on Twitter and on Twitch because sometimes I get different types of engagement and I get to, you know, maybe make a couple of cents. I, it's literally TK's two cents. I get to make two cents, you know, uh, when people engage me on tweets. So it's pretty cool. Check it out, twitch.com. Uh, didn't get paid for that, by the way. Didn't get paid for that. Uh, the work is its own reward. How's it going over there, uh, guys from Twitch? Okay, so here's what Corey had to say on Twitch. Arguably, jealousy is encoded in our DNA, like many creatures. Competing over jealousy plays well into survival of the fittest. Fighting the primal tendency could theoretically lead to a very weakened and defeated human race. Now, I'm going to read a second tweet in a minute, but what Corey here is saying is, hey, look, we feel jealousy for a reason. And if you tell people to suppress that emotion, then you might actually weaken the very thing that motivates people to push themselves to become better. And then Corey adds this little part. We're talking about the end of humans and it would be your fault. You will be the pebble that causes unstoppable ripples in the once calm pond. <laughs> man, to think that I could be so powerful, that I might be the pebble. I might be the pebble. T.K. Coleman, will he be the pebble that causes unstoppable ripples in the once calm pond? I tell you what, if I ever publish a book, Corey, I would love for you to just take that quote, man, or give me permission to put that on the back because that would sound so powerful and amazing. T.K. Coleman is the pebble that causes unstoppable ripples in the once calm pond. I've never been uh, I've never been described in that way. Now, Corey and I had some interesting dialogue about it, and I think we understand each other and are on the same page. But I do want to uh, address this here because this is something that comes up a lot when we talk about um, dealing with our feelings, okay? So what I want to say is you absolutely should not suppress the emotions that you have. You absolutely should not treat your emotions as if they are some kind of enemy. In fact, I believe that when you resent your emotions, you resist the wisdom that those emotions can provide. I believe that your, you know, it's it's kind of like that movie. Um, I, I forget the name of it now, but but you had a uh, um, each emotion was was personalized, you know, uh, a, a, as an individual, and 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 you could have conversations with each of those emotions. I think it was like a Disney film, and, and there are things that you can learn. You can learn things from your sadness. You can learn things from your jealousy. You can learn things from your anger. And if you're so busy trying to make yourself happy by pushing emotions away, you don't get the wisdom that makes you a substantial person, that actually makes your life meaningful. So Corey, you're exactly right, man. You don't want to suppress it. And I also think you're right when you say that there's something to this uh, impulse to be jealous that can make you better. But here's the thing. It's not the mere experience of an emotion that makes you better. Because if that were true, 
everyone would automatically become better off every time they get angry, every time they get jealous. And that's clearly not true because there are many people who respond to these emotions in destructive ways and they get stuck in a self-defeating cycle. So it's not the mere experience of emotion that makes you better. The emotion might provide the opportunity or the catalyst for self-improvement, but it's not the feeling alone. It's the way in which we process that feeling. It is the decision that we make to process feelings like jealousy in a constructive and in a creative way. It's the decision that we make to say, I'm not gonna suppress this feeling, but I'm also not going to sit back and passively expect this feeling to magically transform me into a superior being. I am going to, in a spirit of non-judgment, be present and available to what this feeling is teaching me, but I am also going to push myself to harness the energy behind this feeling in a life-giving way, in a healthy way. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna reach for the, the best decision I can make from the state that I am in. So Corey, you're absolutely right. Um, don't suppress your emotions. If you feel jealousy, what I'm asking you to do here is instead of working against your feelings, I'm asking you to cooperate and to collaborate and to co-create with those feelings. I'm asking you to respond to your feelings in a way that's actually gonna make you smarter, that's actually gonna make you stronger, and that actually increases your survivability. On the other hand, if you allow yourself to be consumed by jealousy, you're not increasing your likelihood of surviving you're not actually becoming stronger. You're actually raising the probability that you will be extinguished by the fires of life. All right, let's go to tweet number two. Let's talk about perfectionism and imposter syndrome. The more you create, the less dramatic you feel about the imperfections in your work. The less you create, the more pressure you put on yourself to be perfect. If you want to overcome perfectionism and imposter syndrome create more frequently. So there, there's a story about uh, a school teacher, and I don't know if it's apocryphal or not, but it's a, it's a useful illustration. Uh, and the school teacher it was, was an art teacher and had two different groups of students. The first group was given an assignment and they were, they were graded by, I think the assignment was like to draw pictures, right? and they were graded by the number of pictures they produced, no matter what the quality was. It was solely on quantity. So if they drew 20 pictures, that would be a better grade than if they drew 10 pictures, even if the pictures were completely terrible, okay? The second group was measured by quality. They were graded by how good the pictures were. So it didn't matter how many, it just mattered how good. At the end of the, the, the experiment, the group that was graded on how many pictures they produce showed greater artistic development and greater self-confidence. And why was that? Well, the theory was when people are free to reiterate over and over again without worrying too early on in the process about getting it right, they learn very quickly and they develop the confidence necessary to achieve a higher level of competence. On the other hand, when people are so worried about getting it right, they put a lot of pressure on themselves and then they run away from the very thing that makes it possible to get better, which is taking risk, making mistakes. There's no way to get better unless you push yourself to do things that might not work, unless you take chances, not because you know it's gonna be good, but because you wanna discover something new. And you can't discover anything new unless you take the risk of wasting your time or getting it wrong. And so this is what I want to share with you today. If you are struggling to put your ideas out there, if you're struggling to write that book or get started on that book, if you're struggling to take that class, struggling to compose that song, struggling to compare an idea, I mean, to, to share an idea with the world, ship more frequently, ship more frequently. Because what happens is when you don't create often, when you say, well, I'm only gonna show myself to the world when I feel very beautiful, when I feel like I am perfect, when I feel like I am worthy to be seen, two things are gonna happen. First thing that's gonna happen is by the time you decide you're gonna show yourself to the world, you're gonna have put so much pressure on yourself to be absolutely amazing. So even if people appreciate it, but they don't think it's amazing, you'll be crushed, you'll be disappointed. Or people criticize you and they're not as impressed, 
you'll be crushed. That's going to stink for you, right? Because there's just too much pressure on that one moment that you share to yourself. So when you say, well, uh, uh, only when I'm beautiful. Now, the second problem that happens is because you are now sharing yourself in this moment where you think you are at your best, when you get a reaction that doesn't match with your expectations, it's going to make you feel like, well, I definitely can't show up in the future because I just gave my best. I just gave my best and I got a terrible response from the world. So the way you overcome that, to borrow a phrase from Scott Birkin, who actually has a, a very good blog post, I encourage you to go check out. It's called, Don't Be Precious With Your Ideas. Don't be precious. Don't be precious with your ideas. You know, Seth Godin, whose blog I believe was, was uh, referenced by Time Magazine as in the top 25, he's one of the most widely read bloggers. He blogs every single day. Um, he's got 19 bestsellers very prolific, well-read guy, shows up every single day. And he says, it's not that I'm a genius. I'm just more verbose. I'm willing to take my ideas, even when they aren't perfect, and I put them out there. And even when I get criticized, even when those ideas don't land well, I actually learn more from putting an idea out there than by keeping it to myself and just working on it until I think it's perfect. All right, so I want to address some comments um, that came in. Let's see here. I have uh, BSV is Bitcoin. What's going on? BSV is Bitcoin says, I admittedly suffer from the perfectionism paradox. The struggle is real. The idea that I must satisfy bothers me, something I'm eager to overcome. I hear you. I think that's a very common thing a lot of us struggle with. One thing I would encourage you to do, is uh is start really small you know um we talk a lot about having higher standards but i think there is a kind of magic to having lower standards right um not because you want to scale back on what your preferences and priorities are but because you want to build momentum and the way to build momentum is to just trick yourself into getting started right um so whatever you can do to share bits and pieces of your work, that the less pressure you put on yourself to be able to satisfy others, just by giving little bits and pieces, little previews, little parts of yourself. So they're not criticizing the totality of who you are, they're just criticizing some little part. Also, if you're new to creating, take advantage of the fact that you're new. You know, your, your work isn't gonna be featured on Huffington Post or on the New York Times. In fact, the likelihood is nobody's gonna know. Nobody's even gonna notice or pay attention. Take advantage of that. You know, experiment often, do many, re do many iterations. You know, um, being less known can actually be a great advantage for you if you want to, you know, uh, practice and make a lot of mistakes. I got more comments. Thank you, BSV is Bitcoin for that comment. I hope you're out there creating, by the way, if any of you read my tweets or you watch this live stream and you have questions or there are things that you want me to talk about, there are objections or concerns you want me to address, let me know in the comments to these tweets. I'm going to be here either way because I've, I've made a commitment to myself to show up for what I love. So even if you don't write any comments, I'm showing up. But if there's something you want me to talk about that you think might be helpful to you, something you want to ask me, go ahead and include it in the comments. I'll do my best to address it. Uh, also, Steve Bedford needed to hear this as a photographer i get stuck in my head about creation well hey man i i, I hope i hope uh you're putting this into application and you're creating more if there's anything i can say or do to support those efforts don't hesitate to let me know let's get to one of the concerns that came up from aquamane and this is another twitch one this is uh this is something up that came up on twitch aquamane says the desire for accuracy is not necessarily the problem a lack of desire for accuracy often creates unavoidable problems, problems one might chase down a rabbit hole in a reactive flurry of myopic creation. To be sure, untethered exploration is necessary at the right time. Iterative churn is often more wasteful and limiting on the long arc. This is a really good point. So what he's saying is that we have to make a distinction between 
someone who is new and just starting out and the things they need to do to overcome imposter syndrome and someone that has a lot of experience and they've been creating for a long time, okay? And, and they actually need to focus on leveling up and creating at a higher level of, quant of, of quality. This is absolutely true. Great wisdom. Thank you for this comment. This, this tweet that I wrote is, is, is directed at people that are struggling to get started or struggling to keep going because you're just worried about getting it perfect or you're feeling unworthy. And this is all about helping you build the momentum necessary to carry you forward so that the work almost begins to do itself through you. But it is true to say that after you've been creating for a while and you've kind of gotten that part down, you might want to challenge yourself to make sure you are make sure you are taking new kinds of risk that are going to make you better so an example for me is when i first started writing i decided that i wanted to do a daily blogging challenge and i showed up every day for a year and i wrote a blog post and a lot of that stuff just wasn't good but it was good for me to overcome my fear of writing my fear of being seen my fear of being misunderstood my fear of being disagreed with my fear of being picked apart and laughed at that was huge for my self-esteem and it made me better by just showing up every day and hitting the publish button, even if what I wrote was absolutely terrible. And I went on to do that for three years. Then there came a point where it's like, okay, I'm not afraid anymore of people disagreeing with me. I'm not afraid anymore of seeing my writing or of, of, of having a bad day. I need to challenge myself in a new way. Now I wanna challenge myself to write like this. Now I wanna challenge myself to, to, to do different things. And you'll know when that moment is for you but I can tell you this, if you haven't started creating at all, you definitely have not reached that moment yet. You can't go the extra mile until you first go the essential mile. So go the essential mile of getting started and developing a positive habit, then you can go the extra mile of pushing yourself to get even better. All right, that's TK's two cents for the day. I hope you enjoy the show. Look forward to, look forward to interacting with you more on Twitter and Twitch. Have an awesome week. Tune in tomorrow, Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm going to be here with Sean Dove, who is the founder for the Campaign for Black Male Achievement. And we're going to talk about the ownership mindset, the success mindset, and how we can cultivate that mindset in Black communities. It's going to be a great conversation. I look forward to seeing you all there. Peace.